Hi, I'm Luca Ferranti and I will introduce Interval Linear Algebra.gl, a package for numerical linear algebra with interval arithmetic, which I have been developing for the Google Summer of Code program. So, the starting point for interval linear algebra is the concept of interval matrix, which in simple words is a matrix containing intervals. Another way to think about it is that an interval matrix is a set of real matrices so that each element in the real matrix belongs to the corresponding interval in the interval matrix. Another way to represent interval matrices, which we will use later, is the so-called midpoint radius notation, meaning that I represent the interval matrix by a matrix AC called the midpoint matrix, which contains the middle points of all the intervals, and a radius matrix A delta, which contains the red eye of the intervals which is half of the width. Now, a final concept that we need before going into interval linear system is the concept of regularity. And we say that an interval matrix A is regular if all the real matrices in the interval matrix are invertible. Otherwise, we say that the interval matrix is singular. And it's good to know that in general, checking for regularity or singularity of interval matrices actually has exponential complexity. We are now ready to define the interval linear system bold A times bold X equal bold B, where bold A and bold B contain intervals. And uh, this bold X is the solution set which is defined as the set of points in the real Euclidean space for which the equation Ax equal b holds for some a in bold a and b in bold b. So the interval linear system is indeed a set of real linear systems. And if a is regular, then we know for sure that the solution set will be bounded and non-empty. But how do we find this solution set? Well, a first naive approach might be to use Monte Carlo. So we sample each uh, interval in the matrix and in the vector. And now we try it with this uh, simple 2D example. And that's uh, the distribution that we get. So, okay, we have this uh, star looking shape. We see that the solutions are not uniformly distributed. They are mostly close to the origin. But the question is, uh, did we get the whole set or are we missing some pieces? And uh, there's a theorem called the etli prager theorem, which can be used to characterize the solution set X. And uh, this theorem tells us that the system of linear equalities is equivalent to a system of real inequalities. So at least in principle, we can uh, describe explicitly the solution set X by solving this uh, system of uh, real inequalities. However, it's good to know that this approach actually has exponential complexity, so not feasible for higher dimensions. Now uh, we solve our 2D example in, with Etli Prager, that's how we do it in the package, and we get that the solution set is that this star composed by four convex polygons, one for each. Uh, quadrant and uh, we also see that uh, the original Monte Carlo dis uh, simulation actually didn't cover the whole set, left uh, some areas uncovered. Here we have uh, a 3D example, so we try to solve this uh, 3D linear system of interval equalities and that's uh, the solution set that we get. So again this uh, 3D non-convex star composed by eight convex polytopes, one for each orthant. So to conclude, in principle, yes, we can characterize the solution set exactly. However, this has exponential complexity, and so it's not feasible for higher dimensions. So what we want to do in practice is to find an enclosure of a solution set. So an interval box containing the solution set. Ideally, we want the hull, so the tightest, uh, interval box containing the solution set, but actually it turns out that also finding the hull unfortunately is exponentially complex. So what we can do if we have big matrices is to use some polynomial times algorithms. And here we have a list of the algorithms implemented in the package, 
which will give an enclosure which may, however, be strictly larger than the hull. So here, for example, we solve our 2D problem using Gaussian elimination. And when we plot the result, we see that we get an enclosure, but however, this enclosure is larger than the hull. And that's something that happens in general. There are special cases when we can get the hull, but in general, we will have some overestimation. And finally, another important concept when we talk about interval linear systems is preconditioning. So those polynomial time algorithms, which I mentioned before, work only under some assumptions on the matrix A. And if A doesn't uh, fulfill those assumptions, what we can try to do is to precondition the problem. So multiply both the sides of the equation by a real matrix C, so that the CA will fulfill those assumptions. And a particularly good choice, which works in most cases, is to choose a C to be the inverse of the midpoint matrix. Let's have now an example to motivate the importance of preconditioning. So let's consider this interval linear problem where A is a lower triangular matrix with all ones in the lower part, and B is a vector with the interval minus two, two as first element and all zeros afterwards. And here we can see what is the theoretically correct answer if we solve the problem with pen and paper. Now, let's solve this problem without preconditioning with the two algorithms, Gaussian elimination and Hansen-Blick-Ron. In both cases, we see that we get the first two elements right. However, the other elements, instead of being zero, are intervals with an exponentially growing width. And this is indeed confirmed if uh, we take a larger matrix. So we see that the width of the intervals grows and grows. And uh, however, if we use this inverse midpoint preconditioning, then we see that we solve this uh, stability issue and uh, get the correct solution, even for bigger matrices. However, there's a price to pay. When we precondition the interval linear system, we are actually changing the problem that we are solving which means that the solution set of the preconditioned problem will not necessarily be the same of the solution set of the original problem. Indeed, if we precondition the problem, we may enlarge the solution set, as it's demonstrated here. So this is our original 2D star. Now we solve with Etli Prager the preconditioned problem, and we see that we get this bigger star. So conclusion, Preconditioning is needed in general to achieve numerical stability. However, the price to pay is that we are also enlarging the solution set. And uh, there are some heuristic strategies to decide whether or not we need preconditioning and what kind of preconditioning we use. Some of those are also implemented in the package. So if we take the example of before, we see that uh, if we don't specify the preconditioning, the solver noticed that, okay, for this kind of matrix, I might have uh, numerical issues, and so I use preconditioning. And without specifying it, we get the correct answer. So conclusions, in this talk, I showcased the interval linear algebra.gl and what it can do at the moment, which is solve interval linear systems. Hopefully there will be some new features coming on soon, like parametric interval linear systems, eigenvalue problems, and so on. And we'll reach the ultimate goal, which is linear algebra done rigorously. Thank you for listening. If you want, you can download the Pluto Notebook from this link. It also has the link to the package. I hope you enjoyed the talk and enjoy the rest of JuliaCon.